out of the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. Woo, I feel a weight lifted. <laughs> See, sometimes people have a tendency to think you have all of the answers. I'm not one of those who uh, have a cape behind this robe and a big S on my chest. I learned how to delegate. And you delegate to those whom God has put in your spirit to be able to carry and shift the way. I want to say this to the spouse of Associate Pastor Anthony Thomas. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Y'all ain't you good for right now. You ain't got to worry about nobody. Just do what you do. But I want to say this to the sunshine because I know when it comes down to things like this, there's an added responsibility that that individual has to carry along with the weight of his own home. And so, uh, I want to say thank you in advance for loaning him. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And if it gets too much, you know, you pick the phone up and you can call Pastor Lake. Look, look, look. But I love it. I love it. Amen. The book of Romans, the fifth chapter today. Let's give God a hand praise. I got a great monopoly in the world.
Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man, but well, one died. Yet, peradventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Mm. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received a or at one bed or fellowship. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we stand in your house. These are your people today. These are the sheep of your sheep. These are the sheep of your pasture. Hallelujah. These are your elect. These are your chosen. You told us in your word that we are a chosen generation of royal priesthood, of holy nation that we should show forth the praises of who called us and brought us into your marvelous life. Father, we thank you. We don't take this call for granted. We speak, we open our mouths even right now. Say, no, we serve you. No, you have no authority. You have no power. You have no blanketed ability to blanket this service. We bind every word and we curse it from the root in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, have your way. Send an angel in this room. Dispatch an angel in this place. The hearts of the people are here gathered. And we will honor you. Help us that we continue to rejoice in hope. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand of praise. the fifth chapter. We're going to again talk about rejoicing in hope. Hope is what every individual male, female, boy, girl, everybody needs a little hope. Everybody needs something to look forward to. Everybody needs a reason to get up out of the bed in the morning. To be able to put one foot in front of the other. That has to be some type of anticipation. Has to be some kind of drive or push. Pushing you and I to a place that we understand there's a reason for living. Many have fought within themselves by God because of what is happening in their present circumstance. There is no point in even going to church. There is no point in me even lifting up my hands and opening my mouth and beginning to articulate because it seems like every time I ask God to do something, it doesn't happen. Every time I open my mouth and begin to articulate and look for the better things seen to get more. The Bible makes it very clear that he reigns upon the just and the unjust. Whether you are saved or lost, all of us in this room are recipients of the heat. Whether you are saved or lost, all of us in this room are recipients of the sunshine. 
Whether you are saved or lost, all of us in this room have a particular duty or responsibility that is the place upon us. Paul writes here to the church at Rome, and I'm going to read this in your hearing from the uh, Message Bible because I love the way that it is very clear to us. And he says, by entering through faith into what God has always wanted for us, set us upright with him and make us fit in him or fit for him. We all have, we have it all together because God, our master, Jesus Christ, has made it so. It is that not all, but we throw open or he throws open his arms to us to discover at the same moment that his arms are already open and his doors are open to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting out his praise. There's more to come is what God is speaking to us. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with trouble. There's something about trouble that squeezes a praise or a hallelujah from the depths of your soul. There's something about worship and trouble that brings you to a place, it brings you in close proximity to who he is. It's perhaps that if you didn't have the trouble that you are having right now, possibly you would call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as you do. Sometimes trouble has a way of putting you in a position where your back is up against the wall and you've got to call upon a God that you haven't seen with your natural eye, but you can feel with your natural body. Trouble has a way of pushing you to a point where you understand the need that you have, that if God don't fix this circumstance, I'm not going to be able to come out of it. But I want you as a child of God to understand that trouble has been ordered by God himself. It is not designed to kill you. It is not to bullshit It is not designed to make you feel bad. It is designed to mature you into that which God has already deemed for you to be. It is designed to break you and to get the jump out of your spirit, your life, your heart, amen, your normal to put you in a position where you walk in the power and the authority that he has given unto us. Can you shout hallelujah? Glory to God. The Bible tells us that we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Church, we are cast down, but we are not destroyed. You, beloved of God, or the church of the living God, you are in a position where you are in fellowship with the God who created everything. That he won't do for you if your ways please him. Church, hear me today. We do a lot of praying and we pray amiss because our behavior does not change. We do a lot of requests and make a request known, but our behavior does not change. We still operate and do the same thing that we used to do because we are operating according to the flesh and not of the spirit. Can you shout hallelujah today? Hallelujah. I know trouble has a way of bringing you to a point and a place whereby you see the error of your way and the behavior that you produce. Yet we still have God. We open our mouths and we articulate and we ask God to do this, that, and the other. I like even how Ray Stephen said it on this one. That the Apostle Paul, amen, write a wrote the letter to the church at Rome in description of the power of God to let loose among the ruin of men. It is about the good news or the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has found 
the way to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ to justify the ungodly. Now that includes all of us because of our ungodly ways. All of us that are in this room. The Bible tells us that we were born in sin and shaped our card in iniquity. We were without God in the world and had no hope. We had nothing going for us. The best I, I, I know you got fine motor cars and you live in fine houses and, and, and we, we wear nice shoes. We do all kinds of finery, but at the same time, you were polluted in your own blood and did not have anything to add to God. You might as well say, ah, y'all stay with me. It's all right. Ah, well, teaches us that as God sees and understands and knows our heart, and that he understands and that it is deceitful and it is desperately wicked. As a result, no one is able to stand upon the righteousness, amen, of the whole world in the presence of God. This is one reason why, amen, as the people of God, we ought to be excited every time we come into the presence of God. Because to come to the presence of God, God has cleaned you up, He has justified you, He's put you in a position where you can now come boldly to the throne of grace. Well, I mentioned the word justified. Let me give you by definition, amen, what the Bible means as far as justification. It is the act by which God of injustice to the state of grace, which is justice. Moving from unrighteousness to the state of righteousness. You might as well say amen to yourself because all of us in this room were born again in sin and shaped in iniquity. Hallelujah. The Bible makes it very clear. All in sin comes short of the glory of God. Even the best of us, amen, that have not done this, that, and the other. You short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And it is God that has justified us. It is God that has moved us from one state to the other. It is done, it is done, it is done, it is done by your willingness to obey what he has already deemed necessary. Listen, church of God, it is not by happenstance that you that you were in. Remember the Bible says uh, that no man comes to the Father except the Spirit draws him. There is no way in the world for a man or woman to come to God except God get a hold to the heart of the individual. Now, here is the next thing. Once God gets a hold to the heart of the individual, it is up to the individual to say yes to the will. It is up to that individual to say yes to the drawing of power that they feel. Yes, people come to church week in and week out. They sit right next to you. They hear the same thing you do. But yet, there's something that begins to draw you. And why does it draw them? It draws you. It draws your mind. It gets your attitude. But the person next to you seems like their mind is far from the east as the west is. How come they don't respond the way you do? It is simply because God is the one who draws men and women to repentance. Well, church of God, the justification, once again, the act by which God moves a willing person from one state of sin to the state of grace. Hallelujah. And the other word that I mentioned, it is hope. Hope is the Greek word elpis, which is confident expectation, or comes from another word elpo, E-L-P-O. It means to anticipate with pleasure, to anticipate with pleasure, and then to welcome. <laughs> Glory to God. You've got to anticipate the presence of God, and then when you feel the presence of God, you you welcome it. That's what worship is all about, which is the reason why we rejoice in hope. There is no way in the world for a young man, young woman to come in contact with the presence of God, yield your mind, your spirit, your will to the things of God and leave unfulfilled. It is not God's 
cross designed for you to leave his presence unfulfilled. For he is a God who has everything going for him. He's got everything going for you. But it is up to you to come to him with your heart in your hand and say, Lord, here am I. Can you shout hallelujah to God? Hallelujah. Well, church of God, amen, he goes on and he says, hallelujah. If we understand that we from the start or from the jump, amen, we're ungodly. When we understand that that's where we started at, then you can understand what justification is all about. Which means I had absolutely nothing to come to God with that he was worthy of. All I had was a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And the Bible says that he will in no wise cast out. So when I understand that I come to him messed up, I come to him, amen, without any plea, with anything that I can even add to him. I come to him just as I am. I come to him, amen, with my mind wrapped. I come to him with my spirit pardoned. I come to him, amen, with everything going against me. Yet he stands in the solitude of his own strength and says, come unto me all, ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Can you shout hallelujah to God? Well, church of God, once again, if we understand at this moment, amen, that we amen, have to be justified by God in order to stand amen, in the solitude of the strength that he's given us, we will find out that there is joy on the other side of knowing that you're pleasing God. I don't know about you, but I've been saved a long time, and there was some times where God, y'all might as well still tell the truth. Uh, we didn't always turn the line like we should, but uh, when it came down to coming to God and to getting things straight, uh, He has a way of drawing you with cords of love to Himself. Uh, God is not in the business of trying to kill you, uh, but He's in the business of trying to restore you to a rightful position as a son and I had to press my way to hear. I had to press my way to meditate. 
like you to a fly on the neck. There are some things I don't even fool with because I learned how to pick my battles because I know there's a backstory on everything. So, when we understand that God is in the position that he has justified us because we have found our way to him, you will find out that he is more loving than you think he is He's so, can I use this term? He's so full of himself that you, in your finite mind, is concerned on whether or not he likes you. You're so concerned and consumed with even what you did against his revealed will uh -huh. that you think he's going to kill you. Uh -huh. But what he's desiring for you is that you come to a place of full repentance. That's all Jesus is saying. Repent. You understand what I'm saying? All he's saying is for you and for me to come Sometimes I don't respond at all. Right. Yeah. Oh, 
us. Right. Because sometimes he already told us what to do. Yes. Study to be quiet. Yes. That's beautiful. To be able to handle this. Now let's just pause. This right here. This can cut you off. This can tear you off. This can put you in spiritual handcuffs. This can push you so far from the presence of God because you are snared by the words of your own mouth. This is why you gotta be careful what comes out of it. Are you listening to me? We still talk about choice in hope, but you can't rejoice in hope until your mind changes. Otherwise, you are still stumbling over your identity. Listen, church, my identity and your identity is found in Jesus alone. When you stop operating in you and you operate in Jesus alone, you will find yourself being shocked by how he manifests himself through you. But hear me, he will only use a willing participant. He's not going to fight you against what you want to do. He tells us you make your plans. But the whole disposing of it is of God. That's why he tells you it is evil to say what you will do this day and that day. We will do this and that if the Lord wills. If he permits. Mm. Listen, church. Do not be shocked. When you start to change and grow up spiritually as a spiritual giant in Jesus Christ, don't be surprised when people who walk alongside you start to leave. Light and darkness cannot occupy the same space. Light and darkness can walk together and be friends. Now hear me good. I'm not calling brothers and sisters darkness. Well, no. What about all that is the pastor man I said be darkness. Nah. That's a lie from the dead. No, listen, I'm not calling it darkness. <laughs> but the fruit of your doings is that of darkness. That's why you got to watch what you do. Watch what you say. Watch how you act. Watch your behavior. Because what you produce will tell where it comes from light or darkness. What we want, because we realize the Lord is soon to come. What we're desiring is to be made just like him. We want to walk just like him. We want to think just like him. Yes. I'll be honest with y'all. I don't pray over Ecclesia. Mm -hmm. I know what's going to happen if it ain't happened already. Mm -hmm. That's time. Because all y'all can blame me. I ask God to give Ecclesia, give his people in this portion of the vineyard an ear to hear his voice. So you hearing something and you find later on that it was the right thing. I knew I felt that. I knew I had that thought. Yes. Yes, yes. It's because I'm asking God to give you spiritual clarity, give you a spiritual ear, 
before you sign that contract, the Holy Ghost will say no. And you hear it. You take the exam and you got three answers. He gives you the wisdom to rule out the stupid one. Now that leaves you two. Or it might leave you one. And that will be, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now what that requires yeah. is obedience on your part. Yeah. It requires you now being submissive to the word of God that you feel and that you read and that you hear. Yeah. That means that your behavior now gets curved. When you want to go right, you can't because the Holy Ghost is saying go left. Hallelujah. It becomes a simple way of living. Yeah. And the more that you are conformed to the image of his dear son, the more you look like him, the more you start acting like your father. You start to move like your father. You start to hear your father's voice. And you operate on what you hear. Which allows us to rejoice in hope. That's the hope. That's our anticipation. Yes, we're hoping. We are anticipating. The rapture of the church. Let me give y'all a news flash. Yeah. I'm not hoping for the rapture of the church. It's going to happen anyway. Yeah. It's up to me to make sure that I am ready for what's going to happen anyway. Yeah. What do you say? Be also ready. Uh, Pastor, what you said? Be also ready. Ain't that what he told us? So, be also ready, working out your own soul salvation with and so that means you is an individual thing. So, if I individually work out that, I continue to rejoice and hope because why? Now you can say that my salvation is fixed. Because now I, I'm not worried about what can I make it. Let me tell y'all why we think like that. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I don't know. I did this and that. Did he? Dr. Maddox? It's double dutch. <laughs> Some of y'all have never done dutch before. It's double dutch. You did it. You did it. He does me. He does me. I don't know if I'm making it. I will. Uh, no, God don't want you. God is not schizophrenic. And he don't want his people to operate like that. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And that takes a condition of the mind. But you have to look at your mind as it is, and say, okay, now it's time for me to change. No more am I going to allow the enemy to sit on my shoulders and tell me I'm not going to make it. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me because you understand what I'm saying? It's alright. If your mind is stayed on him and you walk in him and you follow him, you will find out that the walk will become easy. It's not difficult. Don't let these church folks make you think that walking with God is hard. It's not hard. It's only hard when you play in double dutch. Because you don't know when to jump in and when to jump out. God is looking for consistency in his people. He's looking for us. He's not looking 
for us to be double-minded. For a double-minded man is unstable in this time. Since we're in the, the, the era. A double-minded man or woman is unstable and let not that man or woman think they shall receive. Now that's what he said. Because in him there is no double-mindedness. Either you can do it or you can't. Either I know you open the door or you didn't. Let me give you this thought in the chocolate. My prayer. Yes, yes. Deacon Harris, I call these people. Once you get to a certain place, everybody don't always. Oh, he got big. Everybody don't always applaud. Where you are. I will use Dr. Maddox for an example. If she doesn't mind. All that my wife has gone through in her entire life. And I'm not going to give you the dialogue and all that stuff. Do all that. But there's a whole lot that most of y'all have no idea about. Once you start to make headway, then the after profits show up. I knew you was coming up. I've always I called them the after profits. Because now all of a sudden, after the thing has been made manifest, now you say, I knew you. Yes, that's right. I know it, I know it, I know it. <laughs> the after profits show up. And you have to be willing to smile <laughs> at the after profits. And say, God bless you and keep pushing. Because everybody, and I'm talking to all of you in this room, yeah. I don't care what genre of work you are in, everybody is not applauding right. your success. Right. As you walk with God, right. everybody's not happy, but you ought to rejoice because you who are not a people are now his people, and God knows how to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Don't ask God to kill your enemies. Rejoice in hope, and you got to be willing to go through it. Yeah. Regardless of the naysayer, regardless of what you hear, even the devil will try to sit on your shoulder and tell you you got to be a fool to be doing all this. I'm a witness. He'll tell you you keep going down to that raggedy hotel. <laughs> It ain't raggedy, it's the house of God. It's hell It's the house of prayer. It's God's dwelling place for the moment. God will make a rock his house. And as soon as the glory departs, oh, my, my God. You don't want to ever be in a place where Ichabod is with you. The glory of the Lord has departed. What happened? It was once here and now he's gone because God cannot dwell with his fool of me. When he does not and it's not the forefront. The glory of the Lord leaves a place, and the place becomes desolate. Yeah. Mm. So I 
I'm saying to you. You are too special a people yes. to operate in a desert position Man, yes. yeah, yeah. when he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He said, I've given you everything. Every time I step on the plane, that spot that's between the plane and that little ramp, I said, Lord, you go before me. I know who I am. And some of you, God's going to put you in a position where he's going to test the faith that you say you have. He's going to put you in a position for you to exercise the power that is in you so that the world or those who walk alongside will see that there is something different about that bunch of people. Right, right. Elder Associate Pastor Thomas, you was absolutely right on that verse this morning. We want there to be a difference between us as his people and those who are not his people. You want the presence of God to be so overwhelming that people who desire to see him migrate to you. Right. Yeah. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Yes. Because it's time we're getting ready to exit. And you don't have a lot of time. Enjoy what God has given you and the place that He has put you. So bring up your mindset. Change your thought pattern. Change your verbiage. Yes, sir. Elevate. Yes. Because you serve a God yeah. who can do exploits for you. Amen. If you let him give God a hand.